Hello everyone, my name is Hayden Morgan and today I'll be presenting on my nonlinear systems theory project, which was the implementation and analysis of longitudinal total energy control for unmanned aircraft systems. The objective of my project was to implement a total energy control system or tax controller on the longitudinal dynamics of an unmanned aircraft system and simulation and then compare its characteristic response um, with that of regular controllers such as PID and LQR. The motivation behind this project is the traditional controllers of UAS decouple airspeed and altitude in the longitudinal dynamics, which results in significant spikes in airspeed whenever you have transitions in your altitude. As you can see from these charts over here, whenever you drop your altitude in total or in regular PID control, you get a significant spike and oscillation in your airspeed, particularly in transitions. This is what I want to prevent. Uh, the idea or the general approach behind nonlinear total energy control or total energy control in general, I guess, is um, the management and transition between kinetic and potential energies. The idea is you have your kinetic energy, which is stored as a result of your airspeed velocity. You have potential energy stored as a result of your altitude, and you're able to transition between those energy stores using your elevator or your pitch angle and you're able to add energy to your system as a whole using your thrust command and take away energy from your system as a whole using the drag of your system. So we're gonna go into the derivation a little bit. And before I do, I must give credit to Matthew Argyle and Randy Beard, whose work of nonlinear total energy control for longitudinal dynamics of an aircraft, uh, all of this is based off of, this is the work I was following. So the beginning of this derivation begins with uh, definitions for energy types. We have our potential energy, E sub P, which is defined as your mass times your gravity times your altitude, your kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared, where VA is your airspeed velocity. And then you have your total energy state, which is the sum of both your potential and kinetic energy, and then your difference energy state, which is the difference of those two. Now just using um, general calculus techniques, we're able to take the derivatives of these terms where we've added the potential and kinetic energy definitions into the total and difference energies. The derivative of those two terms um, are as follows, fairly straightforward. Uh, you're able to rearrange these derivative terms in order to solve for the various states and their derivatives as well in terms of our total energy and our difference energy. Uh, and you can also um, notably state that the um, altitude rate can also be defined in its standard definition of your velocity multiplied by the sine of your flight path angle. Now we first assume that we know what thrust and drag are for this case uh, in the nonlinear total energy control. And we're able to then say based off of our definition of H dot or sorry, based off of our uh, definitions defined previously of ET dot, we can then say that this is simply the velocity multiplied by mass times acceleration in all of our axes to get our thrust minus drag, which is our non-conserved uh, force in the system. And then using, as I stated before, this H dot definition, we can solve for E dot D in terms of E dot total. And we can use that term to come to this conclusion right here. Now, in order to to find the control that will stabilize our system, we'll look at the Lyapunov function, which we define to be one half of E tilde total squared plus E tilde difference squared, where E tilde is just defined as the energy desired minus our current energy state. Uh, we'll describe what energy desired is once we get to our guidance model later. Uh, v dot can then be taken to be as follows, very straightforward. We can then use our definitions for E tilde to get these substitutions for V dot. Uh, taking a step further, we have our definitions for E total dot and E difference dot, which we can now substitute in. Uh, we can also substitute in our H dot definition in terms of our flight path angle as stated previously. Then we have our final result. We can then uh, analyze each of these two significant portions right here and here to see that if we can get the entire thing to be negative definite, then we can state that our system is 
globally asymptotically stable to the origin. Um, first, we'll look at this portion right here and we'll control this portion to get it to be negative definite um, using our thrust command. If we solve for thrusts as follows, then we can subtract off of the terms that already exist and add in a gained a term, a proportional term with this um, total energy gain based off of the error in our total energy currently, which produces our new Lyapunov de derivative, where we now have left over this KT term, which we can now control as a rate for our system. We can then take this other portion and seek to make it positive or negative definite by controlling our gamma or flight path angle. And if we choose our gamma control or gamma commanded as follows, then we subtract away all of our terms and we're left with this term that we've created, which is a proportional term based off of the error in our energy difference. Uh, we can substitute our H dot desired definition uh, right here, which is just the desired form of our standard H dot definition that we described previously in terms of our energy difference in total rates. And we get this form right here, which produces the Lyapunov function as followed, where if KT and KD are positive constants, then this entire term is guaranteed to be negative definite, which concludes that we have asymptotic convergence to the origin of zero error, if that holds true. Um, we can convert our flight path angle control to be a theta or a pitch angle control using our angle of attack. Um, so you can see now we have asymptotic stability um, and the ability to track and drive our errors to zero if we hold these two control laws. We can also write our uh, gamma control or flight path angle control in terms of our potential and kinetic energy terms, um, which reduces down to this form where we've selected K1 and K2 to be as follows. The difference in summation of those two uh, with the restriction that KT now has to be less than KD with both greater than zero. So this takes us to the general flow of nonlinear tonal energy control, where you have a commanded height or altitude and a commanded airspeed, which is fed into a guidance model, which we will now talk about, which will output our desired height uh, and velocity and their derivatives, which are intermediate desired terms instead of our end commanded terms. These are fed into our controller, which we've just stated, which give our theta command and our thrust command, which are fed into our, our dynamics to get the control we desire. So working on our guidance model as described previously, we simply describe it to be the derivative of our desired terms or states are equal to the proportional uh, version of the difference between our commanded state and our current desired state, where our current desired state at each time step is just the integration of the, um, the rate term of that state in the desired form, plus the starting desired form, which is just equal to our initial state. Using that um, transition guidance model, we're able to feed those guidance terms into our control, which then, as we stated previously, follows these control laws to get our stability. And for my testing, I use the following gains, um, where KH and KV are our guidance model rates, um, smoothing rates, um, and the total energy and difference energy gains are were applied as follows. And simulation results are as follows. Um, standard PID, as I showed previously, has these significant jumps in airspeed as you drop in altitude. Um, not very good response if you're looking to not have that for LQR control. In general, you get a little bit better. You don't get as much oscillation on these airspeed responses, but you, um, do still have quite a significant spike, especially when you're climbing, I was able to find. And you can see that the results of the text controller is a slower, a little bit slower, but not too bad, convergence to H and a significant drop or reduction in the spike size on your airspeed. And you can see that using oscillations in theta, it's able to better manage uh, the transition between airspeed and your altitude energies. Uh, if we overlay all these plots, you can see that the total energy control is very comparable to the others. Uh, these have a little overshoot, but they're still able to converge around the same time. But the difference in airspeed is quite significant. As you can see, it's a significant drop for all of these transition states compared to LQR and PID. So 
uh, in conclusion, our comparisons for our longitudinal control, we can see that TEX um, has the pro of significantly reducing spikes in airspeed and altitude, which is uh, great. That was our intention. Uh, the cons is it's somewhat slow over transition sometimes between states, uh, commanded states, and you have to have good estimates of your model, uh, your drag, thrust, angle of attack, et cetera. Uh, LQR is, provides great flexibility in your objective, uh, and it partially reduces the downward spikes in your airspeed, um, reduces that oscillation, but it's difficult to tune. Uh, you have greater spikes during climbs in the way that I tuned it at least, and the convergence took longer for altitude in some cases. Uh, PID is inexpensive, but you do get those original spikes in airspeed and altitude during those transitions of states. The conclusion is total energy controller uh, has much better coupling between airspeed and altitude. Uh, good flexibility is allowed with the guidance model that was proposed. And it does require a uh, good understanding and estimation of your model, particularly your thrust and drag terms so that you're able to control.